Susan Morrissey Ledyard was always reading at least two books at any given time. Her love of reading began when she was young and became a constant in her life that ultimately influenced numerous aspects of her adult life. Susan was naturally brilliant, to the point where her siblings found her intelligence to be always admirable, but sometimes intimidating. She did not mindlessly scan the books she read, instead easily absorbing the material and consistently learning new things. She extensively highlighted passages and made notes in the books in her collection. Susan did not become lost in the books she read, instead using what she learned from them to follow her passions and benefit others. She had a deep compassion and concern for others, whether or not they were human. She became a vegetarian at the age of eight out of concern for animals, and as an adult, she campaigned to save sea lions in San Francisco. She was well-versed in both national and international issues from a young age, and remained highly politically aware and active throughout her life. While she was aware of and concerned about the variety of issues facing people across the United States and around the world, Susan never lost sight of those who were closest to her. She cared deeply about the well-being of the most important people in her life, particularly her brother and two sisters. Her family valued her complexity and the depth of her knowledge, and she drew attention from even mere acquaintances because she was so obviously an interesting person to speak with. Susan ultimately incorporated her love of language and literature into her career, working as a teacher for over 20 years. She was drawn to teaching English and language arts at the high school level because working with older students allowed her to fully and deeply dive into literature and explore language with them. She was very popular with her students because she made them feel confident in expressing their own opinions and viewpoints on the books they were studying, rather than demanding a standard response. Susan's career as an educator had taken her to numerous places before she arrived at Academy Park High School in Sharon Hill, Pennsylvania, where she would teach for 13 years. She taught English for a year in Prague and then went on to earn her master's degree and teach in California for a number of years. Despite her travels, Susan's favorite place did not change. She felt the most like herself at the beaches of Stone Harbor, New Jersey, spending time with her family at her mother's home there. Susan's sister Meg would bring her family from California to the house at the shore for three weeks every July, and since Susan was off work for the summer, she was able to spend almost the entirety of their trip there with them. In 2019, that trip to the shore ended on July 20th for Susan, and she returned to the home she shared with her husband, Ben Ledyard, in Wilmington, Delaware. Just three days later, on July 23rd, at approximately 7.30 a.m., Susan's body was discovered in the Brandywine River, near Northeast Boulevard in Wilmington. A short time later, her black 2016 Honda Civic was found parked on Walker's Mill Road near the Rising Sun Lane Bridge, approximately three miles upriver from where Susan's body had been found. Susan's body was taken to the State Division of Forensic Science to determine her cause and manner of death. Investigators stated early on that they did not believe Susan's death had been a suicide, although they could not comment further about what had caused her death without the full results from her post-mortem examination. Susan's loved ones initially believed her death had been an accident, largely because they could not imagine anyone wanting to harm her. Susan's husband, Ben, told her sister, Missy, that the evening before Susan's body was found, he had gone to the movies with a friend. Susan was sitting on their porch, drinking wine and sending texts, when he and his friend arrived home. The friend remained at the house for a brief time before going home. Susan called and texted friends and family members for the next several hours. She was having a conversation with her sister Missy over text until 12.30 a.m. on July 23rd. According to Missy, there was nothing unusual about their conversation. Susan continued calling and texting friends until 2.45 a.m. 
The friends she was texting during this time were all ones she had made while living in California. So while it was almost 3 a.m. on the East Coast, it was only approaching midnight for her friends on the West Coast. Susan being up so late and sending so many texts was perfectly normal behavior for her during the summer months. During the school year, she was dedicated to her students and kept a schedule that allowed her to get enough sleep to be ready for the early mornings she had for school. When school was not in session, however, Susan would regularly stay up late to focus more on spending time with her friends and family or communicating with them. What was unusual about Susan's behavior that night is the fact that she then left home. Her reason for leaving remains unknown. There is no record of her contacting someone and agreeing to meet with them. And while Susan occasionally smokes cigarettes in the evenings, her family does not believe that she would have left home at 3 in the morning to purchase them. Even if she had, she traveled in the opposite direction of the nearest place where she could buy them at that time of night. Authorities were able to use Susan's cell phone records, as well as surveillance footage, to determine that her vehicle had pulled out of her driveway at 3.02 a.m. Two minutes later, it was parked on Walker's Mill Road, where it would be located later that morning, after Susan's body was found. Since Susan's home was only about a mile away, it appears that the car was driven straight from the home to Walker's Mill Road. Because of the darkness of the surveillance footage and the distance of the cameras from the car, no one can be seen getting out of the car. No one can be seen getting out of the car after it was parked, and it cannot be determined if Susan was the person driving the car or if anyone else was in the car with her. One detail been provided also gave a potential explanation for Susan leaving the house and a possible contributing factor to what was originally believed to be her accidental death. According to Ben, as he was going up to bed, he and Susan both took sleep aids they had been prescribed. For Susan, that sleep aid was Ambien. In May of 2019, the Food and Drug Administration issued a warning about Ambien and several similar drugs after patients taking them began experiencing dangerous side effects. While these side effects are very rare, they have resulted in injury and death. The FDA found 66 cases in which patients who took this category of drug unknowingly engaged in dangerous activities like sleepwalking or driving while not fully awake. 46 of these incidents involved serious but non-fatal injuries like burns and the loss of limbs. 20 of them resulted in the patient's death caused by accidental drowning falls, hypothermia, and carbon monoxide poisoning. No matter how unusual these severe side effects are, if Susan had taken Ambien, it opened up the possibility that she had been experiencing some of them leading up to her death. If she had not been fully awake, it could explain why she left her house for no identifiable reason, and she could have accidentally gone into the water after she parked her car. However, problems with this theory were identified quickly after Susan's death. The terrain between where Susan parked her car and the river would have made it very difficult for Susan to make it directly down to the water, especially at night and while she was theoretically impaired. Additionally, despite the proximity of Susan's car to the river, authorities quickly came to the realization that Susan most likely did not go into the river near where the vehicle was parked. That stretch of the river had exposed rocks due to low water levels and other obstructions that would have prevented her body from continuing down the river to where it was ultimately discovered. Susan most likely went into the water closer to where her body was ultimately located. Furthermore, Susan's death did not occur immediately after she left her home. Susan wore a Fitbit, which recorded activity in a heartbeat until around 7 a.m., four hours after Susan left home and half an hour before her body was discovered. Unfortunately, this model did not have a GPS system, meaning it could not be used to track Susan's movements. Susan's cell phone had been found inside her purse, which had been left inside of her car, and therefore it also could not be used to determine where Susan went during this period of time when her location and activities 
remain unaccounted for. The theory that Susan had experienced an adverse reaction to Ambien was fully discredited when her toxicology report was finalized. The report showed that she did have some alcohol in her system at the time of her death, but no Ambien or any illegal drugs. The theory that Susan's death was the result of an accident was also disproven a few months after she passed away. In early October, authorities informed Susan's family that the Delaware Division of Forensic Science had ruled that Susan's death had been a homicide. They found that the cause of her death had been blunt force trauma and drowning. Due to their ongoing investigation, the Delaware State Police have not disclosed the exact nature of Susan's injuries or where they were located on her body. These findings were made public on November 14, 2019. As confusing as the four-hour gap between the time Susan left her house and the time she was killed is, it does offer a wider window of opportunity for witnesses to have seen her. Since Susan's death, her family has organized efforts that have distributed thousands of flyers in the area where her body was found, hoping that witnesses with information that could potentially identify Susan's killer will come forward. While the exact location where Susan entered the river has not been identified, the general area along the river has parks and condo buildings where early morning dog walkers and joggers may have seen Susan or something suspicious on the morning of July 23, 2019. Susan was 5 feet 4 inches tall, weighed 130 pounds, and was wearing a purple tank top at the time she was killed. Susan's family has partnered with Crime Stoppers to offer a $50,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest in the case. The Morrissey family is also preserving Susan's memory and her teaching legacy through the establishment of the Susan Morrissey Foundation. A major focus of the foundation is the Susan Morrissey Ledyard Prize for Achievement in English, a partial scholarship awarded to students from the high school where Susan was teaching at the time of her death, who excel in the subject of English. The foundation awarded its first scholarship to one of Susan's former students in 2021. Two additional students from Academy Park High School received scholarships in 2022. While Susan's family has found some comfort in honoring her legacy through the foundation, they struggle greatly with her death and the lack of answers in her case. Losing Susan and not knowing who is responsible for her murder has dramatically changed their lives individually, as well as their dynamic as a family. The Morrissey family has asked that anyone with information, no matter how insignificant it may seem, report it to police so that they can evaluate its importance. Even the smallest detail could potentially lead to the identification of Susan's killer.